Today we have class by Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada on the nectar of devotion. By performing Vedic ritualistic activities, by giving money and charity, and by undergoing austerity, one can temporarily become free from the reactions of sinful activities. But at the next moment, he must again become engaged in sinful activities. For example, a person suffering from venereal disease on account of excessive indulgence in sex life has to undergo some severe pain in medical treatment, and he is then cured for the time being. But because he has not been able to remove the sex desire from his heart, he must again indulge in the same thing and become a victim of the same disease. So medical treatment may give temporary relief from the distress of such venereal disease, but unless one is trained to understand that sex life is abominable, it is impossible to be saved from such repeated distress. <coughs> Similarly, the ritualistic performances, charity and austerity, which are recommended in the Vedas, may temporarily stop one from acting in sinful ways, but as long as the heart is not clear, one will have to repeat sinful activities again and again. So, according to Vedic ritualistic ceremony, there is recommendation of price chitta. Kond, what is called? Atonement. Atonement, yes. Atonement. So, the example is given just like a thief. He knows that stealing is not good. Uh, he has got experience that in the past he uh, committed stealing, committed criminal offense by stealing, and he was arrested. Then he was punished. Still he is stealing again. Uh, a man knows that stealing is not good. By ordinary law, stealing is punished. And in the scriptures also, stealing is prohibited because it is sinful. And one has seen that a person who is a thief was arrested and was punished. Everything he knows, but he still he commits stealing. Why? Uh, therefore, Bhagavad says through. Sukhdev Goswami, the prayaschitta vimanushanam, simply official prayaschitta will not help a man uh, seizing from sinful activities. Uh, official. Uh, in Christian religion also, uh, they accept. Uh, confess their sinful activities, and again they commit the same sinful activities. So uh, Sukhdev Goswami recommends the prayaschitta vimarsana. Unless one understands his constitutional position, unless he is convinced that why should he uh, commit sinful activities, simply for this body which does not belong to him. It is a foreign. Actually, he has no connection with the body. Vimarsalam means cultivation of knowledge. So one has to cultivate knowledge. Then he can be stopped from sinful activities. People generally they identify this body as self, and for bodily interest, he commits so many sinful activities simply for satisfaction of the senses. But if he is 
cultured, if he is given proper knowledge, that bodily concept of life is not your interest, you are spirit soul. Aung Brahmasmi, in this way, if he cultivates knowledge, uh, that is very easily possible simply by uh, engaging <coughs> oneself in the service of the Lord. Kivalaya uh, bhakta. Simply by devotional service, one can raise himself to the position of perfect knowledge, and thus he can renounce all sinful activities. Vāsudeva bhagavati bhakti yoga prayajita janayati āsū vairāgyam jñānaṁca jad ahaito. In ignorance means in bodily concept of life we commit sinful activities, but if we actually come to the platform of knowledge, jñāna, then naturally there is vairāgya, renunciation. Renunciation means renunciation of sinful activities. Uh, renunciation does not mean renunciation of devotional service. Uh, renunciation means that unwanted things, anartha nivitti, that is renunciation. Adho sadhya tato sadhu sangha tato bhajana kriya tato anartha nivitti sa. If one is actually advanced in spiritual life, execution of regular spiritual life, then automatically anartha nivitti, things which are not required, that becomes automatically stopped, anartha nivitti So that anartha nivitti uh, is possible by uh, Sadhya, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, then Anartha Nivitti, then Nishtha, Ruchi, Asakti, Bhava. In this way we develop our Krishna consciousness, love of God. One. Another example is given in the Srimad Bhagavatam of the elephant who enters into a lake and takes a bath very seriously, cleansing his body thoroughly. Then, as soon as he comes out onto shore, he again takes some dust from the earth and throws it over his body. Similarly, a person who is not trained in Krishna consciousness cannot become completely free from the desire for sinful activities. Neither the yoga process, nor philosophical speculations, nor fruitive activities can save one from the seeds of sinful desires. Only by being engaged in devotional service can this be done. The elephant, hastisna. Hastisna, this is a very practical example. The elephant takes bath in the lake uh, very profusely, uh, throw water on his body and becomes clean. And as soon as he comes on the shore, he takes again dust and spreads over his body. So these are uh, natural examples. Similarly, uh, there are different processes for getting out of the reaction of sinful activities. But you, you take it. But if you again commit the sinful activities, uh, then what is the use of such uh, penance or prayaschitta? Uh, Hastisna, the example is given as Hastisna. Take for example, it is said by chanting Hare Krishna mantra, one is released from all sinful activities immediately. Eka Hari Nami Jato Pap Hare Papi Hare Tato Pap Kuri Bare Nare. This is fair, just like Ajami. His whole life was full of sinful activities. But at the time of death, 
बिकॉज ही आटर द होली नेम ऑफ नारायण ही बिकेम इमीजिएटली रिलीज दैट्स अ फैक्ट बट इफ यू कमिट अगेन सिनफुल एक्टिविटीज देन वट इज द यूज ऑफ चैंटिंग हरे कृष्ण नामनाथ बला जस ही पाप बुद्धि दिस इज वन ऑफ द टेन ऑफेंसेस इफ एनी वन थिंग्स दैट आई एम चैंटिंग हरे कृष्ण मंत्र इट इज रिएक्टिंग ऑल द इफेक्ट्स ऑफ माई सिंफुल लाइफ देन अगेन आई कैन कम इट एंड चैंट हरे कृष्ण इट इज अ वेरी गुड बिजनेस नो दैट इज ग्रेट ऑफेंस नामना द्वला जस ही पाप बुद्धि वन शुड नॉट इंडल्ज इन सच वे जगाय माधाय वॉज एक्सेप्टेड बाय लाइ चैतन्य ओनली ऑन द प्रॉमिस दे दैट दे वुड नॉट कम इट एनी मॉ एनी सिंफुल एक्टिविटीज लॉर्ड चैतन्य महापुरुष मर्सी इज देयर फॉर एवरी वन he can accept everyone one who is sinful that is not a uh, disqualification because in this age kalijo more or less everyone is sinful then nobody can be claimed to be liberated by chanting hari krishna mantra uh, hari krishna mantra will give you give you relief from huh? All sinful activities, provided you don't commit it again. Otherwise, it will be like Hastisna, the example of the elephant, and it will be a great offense if, on the strength of chanting Hari Krishna mantra, we continue to commit sinful activities. That is great offense. We should not do that. The idea is. By chanting Hare Krishna mantra, we become free from the reaction of sinful life. But that does not mean we shall again indulge in sinful life and counteract it by chanting Hare Krishna mantra. No, not like that. No. Once you take to Hare Krishna mantra, you should make uh, rapid progress without committing any sinful activity and uh, retard the progress. Don't do that. Why? There is another evidence in the fourth canto of Shrimad Bhagavatam, twenty-second chapter, thirty-seventh verse, wherein Sonat Kumar says, "Quote, my dear king, the false ego of a human being is so strong that it keeps him in material existence as if tied up by a strong <coughs> rope. Only the devotees can cut off the knot of the strong rope very easily by engaging themselves in Krishna consciousness." Others who are not in Krishna consciousness but are trying to become great mystics or great ritual performers cannot advance like the devotees. Therefore, it is the duty of everyone to engage himself in the activities of Krishna consciousness in order to be freed from the tight knot of false ego and engagement in material activity. Vajra hmm. <clears throat> Bhasu Devam. There is a bhas like that. Uh, that as by taking shelter at the lotus feet of Vasudev Sri Krishna, the supreme personality of Godhead, one can get release from all kinds of material tribulations. Uh, such kind of uh, emanation is not possible by practicing yoga, tapasya, jnana. This is the statement in the Simad Bhagavatam. In all ways, it is recommended that we to we should take shelter. Samasita ji pada pallavang plavang mahat padang punna jaso murari bhavam budhi vasa padang parang padang 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 jad vipadang nati sa. If one takes shelter. of mahatpadam punna jaso murari murari is krishna janardas name so punna jaso his name is famous as pai punna jaso murari 
if anyone takes shelter of his lotus feet, then the great ocean of Nisans uh, become a, a small pit, and one can jump over it very easily. Mm. This tight knot of false ego is due to ignorance. As long as one is ignorant about his identification, <coughs> he is sure to act wrongly and thereby become entangled in material contamination. This ignorance of factual knowledge can also be dissipated by Krishna consciousness, as it is confirmed in the Padma Purana as follows. Pure devotional service in Krishna consciousness... Srila Goswami is giving evidences from different Vedic literatures to support his statement. <coughs> Here is a statement from Padma Purana. <coughs> Srila Jiva Goswami in his Tattva Sandarbha has proved it without any doubt that the Puranas are supplementary to Vedas. They are just like Upanishad <coughs> is part and parcel of the Vedas. Similarly, Puranas are also <coughs> part and parcel of the Vedic literature. There are Philosophers, the Mahavadi philosophers, they do not accept Puranas as Vedic literature, but uh, Srila Jiva Goswami has proved in his Tattva Sandarbha in the beginning that Puranas, Mahabharat, uh, Itihas Puran, they are part and parcel of the Vedic literature, uh, supplementary. Uh, Purana means that we is supplement. Uh, <coughs> so evidences from Purana is as good as the evidence from the Vedic quotation. Uh, that is the verdict of Srila Jiva Goswami. Srila Jiva Goswami is not prepared to accept any statement which does not refer to the Vedic literatures, Vedas, Puranas, Upanishads, Mahabharat, Ramayana, like that. Uh, Srila Rupa Goswami also says in another place, Sruti Smriti Purana di Pancharatriki Vidhi Bina. So he has taken Puranas also as evidences, Vedic evidences. So Sruti, the Vedas, Smriti, the Puranas, and other literatures, Dharma Shastra, uh, Smriti Shastra, uh, and Puran, Pancharatri Vidhi, without reference to all these authentic literature, any kind of uh, devotional activities uh, are not accepted by the Goswamis. They say, uh, without the reference to these all Vedic literatures, any kind of devotional service is simply disturbance. Pancharatri bidhing bina vikantiki hare bhakti utpata eva kalpati. Utpata, disturbance. One. Pure devotional service in Krishna consciousness is the highest enlightenment. And when such enlightenment is there, it is just like a blazing forest fire killing all the inauspicious snakes of desire. Unquote. The example is being given in this connection that when there is a forest fire, the extensive blazing automatically kills all the snakes in the forest. There are many, many snakes on the ground of the forest, and when a fire takes place, it burns the dried foliage, and the snakes are immediately attacked. Animals who have four legs can flee from the fire, or can at least try to flee, for the snakes are immediately killed. Similarly, the blazing fire of Krishna consciousness is so strong that the snakes of ignorance are immediately killed. Hmm. What? Krishna consciousness is all auspicious. Srila hmm. Rupa Goswami has given a definition of auspiciousness. The snakes, Kala Sarpa, Indriya, uh, Prabhupada Saraswati has explained about these Kala Sarpas. 
snake, our senses are compared with the snakes. Just like a snake, as soon as it touches somebody, it kills. It is very dangerous, touching by the leap of the snake. Similarly, a, a slight sense gratification is so dangerous. Kala sattva indriya patali. Especially in the sex matter. So the yogis, they are training the senses how to restrain them from sense gratification. But a devotee, on account of their senses being engaged in the service of the Lord, uh, there is no poisonous effect of the senses. Rishi kena rishi kesa sevanam bhakti ruchat. Krishna's another name is Rishi Kesh. Ratasthapayama uh, uchita. Rishi Kesh. In the Bhagavad Gita, this word is used, Rishi Kesh. So, Rishike means the master of the senses. Actually, our senses are given by Krishna. We wanted a type of instrument to enjoy a certain type of material enjoyment. And Krishna has given us senses. Actually, the proprietor of the senses uh, is Krishna. Therefore, his name is Rishikesha, master of the senses. Uh, so, uh, if we actually use the senses for the service of the proprietor of the senses, uh, that is bhakti. Uh, do not we do not want to stop the activities of the senses, but it is, they are used for the purpose of the sense proprietor rishikesh. That is called bhakti. Rishikena rishikesha sevanang bhakti rucha. Bhakti means uh, don't use the senses for sense gratification. Apply the senses for the satisfaction of the proprietor of the senses. Rishi kena rishi kesa sevana bhakti. Go on. Śrīla Rūpa Goswāmī has given a definition of auspiciousness. He says that actual auspiciousness means welfare, <coughs> welfare activities for all the people of the world. Yes. Just like this Krishna consciousness movement. It is welfare activities for all the people of the world. It is not a sectarian movement, not only for the human being, but also for the animals, birds, bees, trees, everyone. Ah. This discussion was made by Haridas Thakur with Lord Chaitanya. In that statement, Haridas Thakur affirmed it that by chanting Hare Krishna mantra loudly, the trees, the birds, the beasts, everyone will be benefited. This is the statement of Nama Charja Haridas Thakur. So, when we chant Hare Krishna mantra loudly, it is beneficial uh, for everyone. This statement was put forward in Melbourne, in the court. The, the court inquired, why do you chant Hare Krishna mantra loudly in the street? Uh, the reply we gave that just to benefit all the people. Uh, actually it is the fair. Of course now, there is no prosecution by the state. We are chanting very freely on the streets. Uh, that is the benefit. If we chant Hare Krishna mantra, it benefits everyone, not only human being. Uh, my Guru Maharaj used to say, if somebody complain that we go and chant, but nobody attends our meeting, the Guru, Mah- Guru Maharaj will reply, that why? The four walls will hear you. That is sufficient. Uh, don't be disappointed. Go on chanting. If there are four walls, they will hear. That's all. So chanting is so effective 
that uh, it benefits even the animals, bees, birds, insects, everyone. Hmm. Go on. This is the best welfare activity. In the human society there are welfare activities for some society or nation or community or human being. But this welfare activity is beneficial not only to the human society but to the birds, beasts, tree, animal, everyone. This is the best, supermost welfare activity in the world. Spread Krishna consciousness. Hmm. Go on. At the present moment, groups of people are engaged in welfare activities in terms of society, community, or nation. There is even an attempt in the form of the United Nations for world health activity. But due to the shortcomings of limited national activities, such a general mass welfare program for the whole world is not practically possible. The Krishna consciousness movement, however, is so nice that it can render the highest benefit to the entire human race. Everyone can be attracted to, by this movement, and everyone can feel a result. Therefore, Rupa Goswami and other learned scholars agree that a broad propaganda program for the Krishna consciousness movement of devotional service all over the world is the highest humanitarian welfare activity. John? How the Krishna consciousness movement can attract the attention of the whole world and how each and every man can feel pleasure in this Krishna consciousness is stated in the Padma Purana as follows, quote, A person who is engaged in devotional service in full Krishna consciousness is to be understood to be doing the best service to the whole world and to be pleasing everyone in the world. In addition to human society, he is pleasing even the trees and animals because they also become attracted by such a movement, unquote. <coughs> A practical example of this was shown by Lord Chaitanya when he was traveling through the forests of Jharikanda in central India for spreading his son Kirtan movement. The tigers, the elephants, the deer, and all other wild animals joined him and were participating in their own ways by dancing and chanting Hare Krishna. Yes, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was passing through the forest of Jharikanda in central India, uh, the, all the animals joined with him. Uh, of course, he is Krishna himself. But if one becomes purified, uh, there is no question that uh, uh, all animals, living entities, would join in Sankirtan movement. Uh, there is evidence. Uh, but one must be a very sincere and powerful preacher if we cannot preach eh, and, the, and the society of the animals, we can preach at least in the human societies who are supposed to be uncivilized or uh, very in lower status of life. Actually it is so happening. In Africa also our men are going interior in the village. Uh, they are almost naked, these Africans. We have got pictures with big, big earring. Uh, so they are also, they are children, and they also dance in Krishna consciousness, in the Hare Krishna chanting. And uh, this is the wonderful moment that anyone can take part. We see the children take part, the dogs take part, the so-called uncivilized men, they also take part. This is the universality of Chaitanya Mahapurvos. Movement, Prithivite Ache Jato Nagaradi Gram, Sadvatta Prachar Hoibi Morna. So it is Lord's prediction, and that is fact. Simply, we have to serve the Lord and execute a mission that will make our life successful. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.